Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Alicia Dolan here with Crafting in My Corner. Today we are in the Stamping Corner for a Stampin' Sunday video. I am an uh, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I have a really sweet card to show you today. We are going to make a card with the sweet strawberry stamp set and punch bundle. So let's go ahead and we'll get started and I can show you all the steps. So first we have a card base that is real red and that's cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. For the inside of our card, we have a piece of basic white that measures four by five and a quarter. And for the front of our card, we have another piece of real red that measures, hold on, let me measure it. That measures three and a half by no four and a half by three sorry I was measuring from the wrong side there okay four and a half by three we have a piece of garden green that measures two inches by four inches and we have another piece of basic white that measures three inches by two and a quarter. And I will upload all those measurements into the description after the video. We are also using Old Olive, Real Red, Cherry Cobbler, and a little shaded spruce ink. These are all colors that are in the Regals collection. So if you got if you have those colors, you can use those. If you don't have those colors, you can always substitute with something that you do have. And today we're using the Sweet Strawberry Bundle, the Stamp and the Punch Bundle. So anytime you can order something in a bundle, you do save 10%. All right, so to get started, we will do most of our stamping first. So, on our piece of basic white that goes on the inside of the card, it's always nice to add a little something extra. So, I just stamped a couple little images of the strawberry and a little strawberry leaf. So I'm going to get my stamp and pierce mat because today I, the stamps that we are using are photopolymer stamps and they need a little bit of foam when you use them. So somewhere in your stamping equation, you always want to have a little bit of foam in there. And today I am using the Stampin' Acrylic Blocks I and H, H and I, C and A. So I just put all my images onto blocks to make it easier for me to stamp today. So first we're going to stamp our strawberries. So I'm going to open up the real red and first we're going to stamp this image here, this one that's kind of the background of the strawberry. And it's not a solid image, it's meant to have a little bit of dimension, so that's why it looks the way it does. And I'm going to put that down here in the corner. And then I'm going to add some more ink and I'm going to grab my extra piece of paper and I am going to stamp off over here on the side because I want my second image to be a little bit lighter. It wouldn't have to be, that's just how I wanted it. 
And then I'm going to clean off my stamp real quick. And today I'm using the Stays On Cleaner because when I use a red ink or black or brown that has red in it, I try to clean it as much as I can, but there'll always be a little bit of stain from that red ink. So I'm using the Stampin' Scrub with the Stays On All Purpose Cleaner today. And it looks like this. It just comes in a small bottle with an, you can put it directly on the stamp and then scrub, but I usually put it on the scrub and then just rub my stamp on it. All right, so then I am gonna close up my Real Red for a minute and open my Cherry Cobbler. And again, the, the colors that I'm using today are all in the, uh, and don't let me say it wrong, the Regals collection. So this time we're gonna stamp the image with the seeds and the strawberry outline. And I'm gonna put the first one right down here. And it's really hard to get them to line up perfectly, but I am not 100% sure they're meant to. So. And I'm going to stamp off again because, again, my second image is a little bit less sharp than the first one. Okay, so there are those. And I'm just going to clean that off. And I know that I used my Stays On Cleaner up in this corner, so that's really the corner I wipe it on. And then I kind of use the rest to dry it off a little bit. So there is that, and then we're going to stamp a little leaf up here on the top, and I'm going to use Old Olive for that. I'm just going to scoot this cherry cobbler to the side because we're going to use that again in just a minute. So I'm going to tap down, and now this is one of the classic ink pads. It's the older style, and so it's not anywhere near as soft as the new ones are. You still don't want to press down extremely hard, but you can press a lot harder than you can on the new ones without it getting a lot of extra ink on it. And mine has been well used. I could definitely use a new old olive ink pad. Or at least to buy the re-inker and ink it up again. Okay, so there are my strawberries for the inside and I'm going to set those aside until we're ready to assemble. I like to stamp and get everything ready first and then assemble all at once when I know what my finished project is going to look like. Sometimes when I'm designing I just, uh, I kind of stamp as I go. So if I have to stamp and layer and stamp and layer and stamp and layer. All right, so now we're going to stamp this green piece here. So I'm going to use my old olive and while I'm doing that, I have some scraps over here that I want to stamp because we're going to punch these pieces out. Now, before you start stamping to punch something out, you always want to turn your punch upside down, unlock it. This is the lock button that keeps it closed. So you're going to just push that gently, unlock it, and when you are ready to stamp something, you want to measure first and see how it's going to fit in there because you don't want to have a piece that's big like this and you have to put it all the way in and stamp all of those and just to get this image where you stamped it so what i did was i kind of measured out that leaf and this one here so that i know what size piece i need so this way 
I know that I, if I stamp the leaf this way, I can just slide it in here and punch it out. So that is what I'm going to do. So here is my leaf. Oh, it looks like they took off the other part. Okay, so we'll do this one, this one in one step. So we're going to ink up our leaf, and this is Old Olive ink. And I'm going to put it right up here because I already measured with my punch so that I know it'll stamp out. And this is the only one I'm going to stamp like this, so I can clean that right off. And I'm going to take this leaf off and I'm going to put on the one with the outline. I heard a message come through on my computer. I'm just going to check and make sure that no one is telling me they can't hear me. And I will be right back. Hello, Kathy. Thank you for joining me. Okay, I see your message now. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Let's see. Okay, so next, I try not to lose my place too much. We are going to take this leaf here with the little outline. And this sweet strawberry bundle, when I first saw it, I knew that it was one I definitely wanted to have. Okay, so next we're going to take our shaded spruce and I just have a little stampin' spot that came in my paper pumpkin. So if you get the paper pumpkins, you can save all these stampin' spots and you can actually get refills for them. So if you didn't want to order a full size ink pad. You could just use Stampin' Spots and they are really great for traveling or on vacation, wherever you wanna go. I know that next week I'm leaving to go camping and I'm definitely planning on taking some of my stamping supplies with me and it saves a ton of space if I can just take Stampin' Spots as long as I know which ones I wanna use. So you can also order stamping spots that are blank and you can fill them with ink refills uh, of your own choice. So then you would have to have the refill, but still a good option. Okay, so now first I'm going to punch out this leaf and then I will you know what, we do need that other leaf again and I completely forgot. Okay, so we're gonna punch this leaf out. And then I am gonna switch this back to the other one because I forgot that I need to use it one more time. Technically several more times. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back on there and open the old olive up and on this piece that's two by four we are going to stamp the image just repeated several times to kind of make our own designer series paper so i'm going to get ink up my stamp and i'll stamp this way And then maybe one here. And another one here. And one right here. Okay. 
you can tell that my old olive ink is running out a little bit. I'm definitely going to have to order either a refill or a new stamp pad or maybe both because this I use this color a lot. It's a great leaf color. Okay, and then one more here. All right, and then I am done with this little leaf stamp for now. I can clean that off real quick and just set it to the side. And then I need to stamp, let's see, I'm gonna turn my punch over again and just make sure that I have enough space for that one and I don't think I do so that I'm not going to use that one but there's enough space on this one I could go either way so maybe I'll go this way and first I'll stamp the old olive this way and then I'm going to open my little shaded spruce and I'm going to tap it on here with the uh, stamp and spots I find it's better to open them and tap them on the stamp than try to stamp on them because I leave the lid attached and the lid is taller than the bottom of the stamp so it doesn't sit flat. It kind of it'll bop around and I know that from experience so I choose not to do it that way why make things harder for ourselves right okay so I'm gonna try and line that up as close as I can and I find that even though I can see through these clear stamps sometimes I still don't do a very good job of lining them up I guess it just depends on what else is going on inside my head and if I'm if I've had too much caffeine and my hands are twitchy who knows okay and then the one last thing I did do which I don't know if it makes a big difference or not but I think that you will notice it if you do it I like to use these little sponges. Now we have uh, little Stampin' sponges like this, mini sponges. They don't sell these yellow ones anymore. But I like to tap them a little bit in the ink and then just kind of go around the edge. I feel like it softens the edge up a little bit. And then sometimes I even just sponge around the old olive colors actually it's not really darker than the garden green so I don't think you probably notice it a whole lot especially in the video but up close I think it makes a difference okay so there we have our we have our inside ready We've got our green. We've got one leaf. I'm going to cut out this strawberry. And I'm going to punch out this other top. So you can turn it upside down, line it up, and then when I punch it out, I try to move my hands over here. Because earlier, I don't know if you can see it, but I got my, my hand caught in the punch and it really it really hurts so don't do that learn from my mistakes don't do that all right so there's my leaf and then we are going to do two strawberries so we're going to close this up and put it to the side and i'm going to open up the real red 
I'm going to check my punch again. I'm pretty sure I can go this way. Oh, just barely. Let me get a bigger piece. Just because I don't want to take a chance of it not getting in there. And I'm just going to use a big piece this time. I know that I don't need that much. But yeah, at least I'm covered. And I could probably use those little red flowers for something else later on. All right, so my strawberry I put over here and we're going to tap it down in the real red. And then I'm going to stamp kind of close to the bottom. Well, that might be too close. Hopefully not. I'll open up my cherry cobbler. And I'm going to stamp the outline in Cherry Cobbler. And I'll try to line that up again. You can see I didn't clean my block off very well. All right, and then I'm going to press in the center and pull it off. That doesn't look too bad. All right, and since I'm going to use it again, I'm not going to clean it off. I'm just going to let it sit. So now, oh, I did it the wrong way. Oh, sometimes. See, even after I measured, I still did it the wrong way. All right, so we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna do it again. And this time, I have to remember that the top of the strawberry goes at the bottom. Okay. So here we go. One of these days, it's gonna, it's all gonna, I'm gonna figure it all out. All right, so the top of the strawberry goes at the bottom. Let's see, can you guys see if I'm this close to the edge? I think you can. All right, so now I'm gonna stamp it the right way this time. And I'll ink up the other side of my stamp. And I'm gonna try and get it right on, well, as close as I can. If I were using the Stamparatus, then I could line it up pretty much perfectly, but I didn't use that today. All right, so now, our strawberry can get in there. And we can punch it out. Alright. There we go. So now I have a little extra flower and a red leaf I can use for something else later on. And I've got one red berry. Now I'm going to punch out one more, so I need to stamp in real red. Top goes at the bottom. And then cherry cobbler. And I'm going to stamp. I didn't put my head in front of there, did I? So you guys can see, hopefully I didn't do that. I did tape a video one time and then realized that I, my <laughs> head was right in between the camera and the project I was working on. So no one could even see what I was doing. Hopefully I haven't done that to you <laughs> today. I'm trying to watch on my computer across the way as I work, but I'm not always a very good multitasker, so I'm not sure if it's working out well. All right, so now I can close this up, the real red, and we have one last bit of stamping to do, but we're gonna punch these out first. This, I should say, not these. Although I might be able to get that other strawberry out of there. 
once this one's out. All right, so there's that. And here's all my little kind of stranded bits. And I'll put this off to the side. And then the one last thing we are going to stamp is on this little piece of white, we're going to stamp hello there. So I'm going to ink up my stamp. And this little hello there is on block A. It's a little tiny block that only fits little tiny words. All right, so now I'm just going to stamp it real careful right here. I think that turned out good. Uh, and then we have, let's see. One, we have one more thing to do. So on this piece of red that's three, what did I say, four and a half by three, we are going to emboss it. Now, you wouldn't have to do this if you don't have an embossing machine. You could just leave it plain or you could stamp it with strawberries or um, whatever you wanted to do but uh, today we're going to emboss it with this embossing folder which is called the brick and mortar embossing folder this is one of my favorites I love brick walls and I love wood plank um, those are just some of my favorite things so what I did was I opened it up and there's two sides of an embossing folder. One side is more raised and one side is a little bit depressed. So what I did was I took this sponge roller, which Stampin' Up! doesn't have these sponge rollers anymore, but you could always use a sponge or, you know what, let's try it. We can try it with one of these little brushes and see how it turns out. So what we're going to do is we're going to, whoops, well, hopefully <laughs> you're not going to drop it like I did. But if you do, it's all fine. And I'm just going to clean the back of it off real quick on my chamois. Set that back to the side. I need lots of cleaning stuff today for whatever reason. All right, so then we're going to tap it in this red ink, cherry cobbler ink, and then I'm just going to brush it gently on the folder. And I'm trying to be very gentle with it because I haven't tried this before with the brush. I've only ever used either a brayer or a sponge to get the ink on there. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but we'll see. And I want to get a spot that's a little bit bigger than my piece of paper. I suppose it could be a smaller spot too. I'll have to try that later and see how it turns out. All right, so then when you can see that you've got enough ink on there, or what looks like enough, and like I said, I haven't tried this before with these little Brush. It's a brush, really. It's really soft. And it kind of, you can use these for background colors and stuff. So I'm going to set that to the side. And I'm, I'm going to run this through the embossing machine and see what we come up with. So 
Oh, if you'll just be patient with me for just a minute. And then you can see this would be the back side, how it kind of has the depressed spots, and then this is the front. And I don't know that the ink makes a whole lot of difference on this one, but on the ones that have, uh, like if I were to use a black or a dark gray ink instead, you, I think you would notice a big difference in the image. So if gray, which kind of makes the bricks stand out just a little bit more. Even if they don't look a ton different, I feel like small details can make a big difference in a card. And so I'm always trying to think of ways to add a little something extra. All right, so now we are ready to put our card together. Let me scoot this to the side and we'll grab all our pieces. Okay, and this time I am gonna put the inside in first. So I'm gonna turn that over. Oh, my hands are dirty. Let me wipe them off real quick so I don't smudge on my white paper, hopefully. I feel like I'm making a bit of a mess today over here. All right, so now I'm gonna use my liquid glue and I'm gonna put a line around the outside and a squiggle in the middle. And then I can turn it over carefully and try to center it a little bit. Oh, I probably should have waited for my finger to dry because I see a tiny, teeny tiny smudge right there. So it just looks like some strawberry juice escaped, I guess. And next we're gonna do this brick piece the same way. Now, when you're gluing an embossed piece, you kind of wanna make sure you get the parts that are raised up a little bit, because if you get the glue on the, in the depressed marks, it might not adhere as well. So this time I'm gonna go in little lines along the brick in between the brick, which is the mortar, right? I think. And we're gonna line that up, kinda in the center. And I know I always tell this in my videos, but I like the liquid glue because if I don't get it exactly right, if it's a hair off, I have just a few minutes to not a few minutes, but just enough time to adjust it if I feel like I need to. So I'm going to do the same thing with the garden green leaves. Line around the edge and a squiggle in the middle. And I'm going to turn that over and put it right about here. Okay, and then the next part I'm going to turn over and I am going to add Stampin' Dimensionals to the back of this one. One close to each corner. Not right in the corner, but set in just a little bit. And then I can peel off the backs. And I'm gonna put that one right here. Now this 
card, I actually found not the card itself. I chose all the little things and where they would go, but it was a Mojo Monday sketch on Pinterest. So if you're ever looking to make a card and you just need an idea kind of how to arrange it, they give you the measurements of each piece and then you choose from what you have how you're going to put it together. So sometimes when I need to do something different, that's what I look for. All right, so now at the bottoms of these little strawberry tops, we're going to put a little glue just on the bottom leaves. And it doesn't need to be very much, just a little bit will do. And then I'm going to pick them up carefully. And when I turn them over, I'm just going to glue them on each strawberry so they kind of stick off the top. I'm going to let them dry for just a minute. seems dry and the first one I'm going to turn over and put some glue on. It doesn't need a lot, just a little. And I am going to stick it on the front. Let's see, I think this way. And then my little leaf that I made and punched out, I'm going to put some glue on that too. And this one, I'm going to kind of stick behind there a little bit and let it hang off the edge. And then my other strawberry, I'm going to put one Stampin' Dimensional on the back of that. And I'm going to stick this strawberry right over here. So it kind of stands up a little bit. And then the last thing I am going to do is I am going to add some of these red rhinestones. Now these are little rhinestones with sticky backs. So I can use my take your pick tool and this end of the take your pick tool is the end with the sticky stuff on it. It's like a putty maybe. And I can just push those little rhinestones off so I can stick them on there. And I'm going to put on three of those little rhinestones. So maybe I should put one right here too, because I got a little smudge right there. So now I need one more, because I feel like I need to have an odd number. Let's see, here maybe, or here. Nope, I think up there. Maybe I'll put one on the inside too where I had that little smudge. Right here. There we go. And these are nice. They're just small ones, so they're not too big that they'll make your card too bulky for the mail. They're just the right size. And they add just enough sparkle add a little something. Week neighbors and I will see you again next week for another Stampin' Sunday video. Thank you. Bye.